All right, Math 1 solving equations 5. So even though I'm not there, we're still going to be working on getting these equations solved. Now, you should have already done questions 1, 2, 3, and 4 when you first got them. And those are more review-style questions. You may have had trouble with question number 1, um, but 2, 3, and 4 we should have been able to get. So let's do those two. Um, then I'll give you a couple example problems, and we'll get going from there. So remember, we're doing the justifications here. Now, what I'm going to allow for us to do on this one, um, before, say for example, number 1, we've got 12 equals 10 minus k. Positive 10, so I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. We can do that because of the subtraction property of equality. Now, normally, 12 minus 10 gave us 2, 10 minus 10 gave us 0. We'd have 0 minus k, and we'd have to do that additive identity property, okay? We're going to drop that for now. So 10 divided minus 10, that cancels out. We're left with negative k. Remember, that's like negative 1k. So we're going to have to divide by negative 1 using the division property of equality. And that would give us 2 equals, now we used to think just positive 1k, and then we had to use that multiplicative identity. Um, but we're going to say the adding 0, that additive identity, and the timesing by 1, that multiplicative identity. We're just going to assume we know those ones, and we're going to get rid of those ones so that we can just um, focus on the other stuff. Okay? So then that would just be 2 equals negative 2 equals k. That's a negative somewhere. Okay, number 2. 12 plus x, so we've got a positive 12, so we're going to have to subtract 12 from both sides. So that would give us 0 plus x, but we'll just say 0, or x, I mean. Okay, 32 minus 12 would give us 20. So the subtraction property of equality says that we can do that, and we get x equals 20. Okay, number 3, we've got 153 equals 17 times n. So the inverse operation of multiplying is dividing, so we divide both sides by 17, and gives us n, because 1n and n are basically the same thing. Um, and the division property of equality allows us to do that. Um, then we go 153 divided by 17, and that gives us 9. So we have 9 equals n. Okay. And then finally, we've got 12 equals v divided by 3. So we do the opposite. We times both sides by 3. Those cancel out. 3 times 12 is 36. We're left with 36 equals v. We can do that because of the multiplication property of equality. Okay. So those are those first ones that we should know how to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine those together. Okay. Now we're adding some more complexity to our problems. Okay. So let's take a look at number 5 and number 7. We'll use those as our two examples. Okay. So once again, we're still going to be doing those steps. So now here's the way how to, here's how you want to think about it. Okay. Let's say that we knew what x was. Let's say x was 8. Okay. So, thinking of order of operations, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add and subtract. So, if we knew what 8 was, the first thing we would do is we'd say it's in parentheses, but that just means multiply, so no other parentheses, no other exponents. We have a multiply, negative 2 times 8. And we'd do that first, and we'd get negative 16 minus 10 equals, and then that obviously wouldn't be true for this case. Okay, once we did the multiplication, no other division. Okay, no addition, so now we do the subtraction. So we'd subtract the 10 and get negative 26. Okay, but we're solving now. Now instead of that 8, now we have the x. So to do it, we're actually going to do the inverse. So instead of subtract, we would add. Instead of multiply, we divide, and we're going to go in opposite order. Okay? So here's a good way to think through this. So I look at my x and say, 
what is happening to x. I'm going to make a little mini table over here. Say, well, first we would times by a negative 2, then we'd subtract a 10, and that would give us our answer. But now that we're solving, we're going to go backwards and do the inverse operation. So the opposite of adding 10, or subtracting 10, is adding 10. So I add 10 to both sides, right? Because the addition property of equality says if I want to maintain equality, I have to do it to both sides. So negative 10 plus 10 becomes 0. So we've, we're left with negative 2x on the right side. Negative 8 plus 10 gives us positive 2 on the left side. Now we've created that equivalent equation. It's the same as our beginning one, but it's more simple. Okay, so we did that part. Now we move up. Now we would normally times x by a negative 2, but we've got to do the opposite. So we're going to divide by a negative 2. So I divide by a negative 2 on both sides. That would give us 1x, or just x equals 2 times divided by negative 2 is a negative 1. The division property of equality says I can do that. Now I've made another equivalent equation, same as the other ones, but this one's the simplest form, so that's my answer. So, thinking through a problem, we're actually not going to do 7, we'll do number 8 instead. Okay. So, if I look at number 8, so number 6 is going to be very similar to 5. So, if I look at number 8, I can say, okay, what have I got going here? I've got negative 4 equals P divided by 2 plus 6. So, what is happening to my variable P? Well, first, I would divide it by 2. Then, you know, once I knew what p over 2 was, if p just happened to be like 2, I would go 2 divided by 2, which would give me 1. Then we would add the 6 to that and get 7. Order of operations tells me I do it that way. But because we're solving, we're thinking backwards. So instead, first I'd divide by 2. Then we would add the 6. But I'm solving... So I go backwards, and I do the inverse operation. So instead of adding 6, we're going to start out by subtracting 6. And I want to maintain equality so that subtraction property of equality tells me I do it to both sides. So I subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6 is 0, so I'm left with p over 2 equals negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10. Now, I do the opposite of dividing by 2, which would be timesing by 2. So I times 2 to both sides, giving me negative 20 on the left. Those cancel. I'm left with p on the right. I can do that because of the multiplication property of equality, and I'm done. That's my simplest equivalent equation. Okay? So now, let's give ourselves, we need to do number 6 and 9. 6 is like number 5. 7 and 9 are like number 8. And let's try to do 11 and 12 as well, which are like number 5. Okay, So let's give ourselves, that's five problems, let's give ourselves um, 10 minutes to work on that. Okay, So if we could have our guest teacher please pause this video um, and we will get going with... Um, Give us about 10 minutes, work on all of these problems. If you get done with them, try to move on ahead, and then we'll take a look at them. So I'll leave those examples up. Pause the video right now. All right, so that should have been paused, and now we will take a look at questions 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Did I tell you to do number nine, 10? I may have forgotten, but you should have anyway. Okay, so number 6. So let's do 6, and then we'll do 11 and 12 all together. Okay, so number 6 here. So I've got negative 16 equals negative a minus 1. So what is happening to a here? Well, we're times and by a negative 1 first, then we're subtracting 1. 
So going backwards, I would add 1, then divide by negative 1. So we add 1 to both sides. Can't add it to the a because that's a variable. Those become 0, so we're left with negative a on the right side. Negative 16 plus 1 would give us negative 15 on the left. Okay, the addition property of equality tells me I can do that. Now, we would then go to the next step, which is dividing by negative 1. So I divide everything by negative 1. That's like a 1 there, so that would cancel, giving me a equals negative 15 divided by negative 1 is positive 15. The division property of equality tells me I can do that. Now, normally that would be 1a, but that multiplicative identity tells us we can get rid of it, but we're not so concerned with that right now. And there we go. That's what we should have done for 6. Okay, now looking down at 11. Okay, what's happening to x here? Well, first you'd times by 8, then you'd subtract 4. We're solving, so we're going to go in reverse order and do the inverse operation. Opposite of minusing 4 is adding 4. Opposite of timesing by 8 is dividing by 8. So we start here at the bottom. I add 4 to both sides. That becomes 0, so I'm left with ax equals negative 36 plus 4, negative 32. The addition property of equality says I can do that. Then we have to divide both sides by 8. That becomes 1, so we're just left with 1x, which is x. Negative 32 divided by 8 is negative 4. And the division property of equality says we can do that. We've created the simplest equivalent equation that will help us solve that problem. Okay, number 12. Okay, same exact idea. So if I need to, what's happening to v? First I times by negative 10. Then I would subtract 3. We're going backwards, so the opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. So I add 3 to both sides. That gives me negative 10v equals negative 173 plus 3. It's negative 170. Next step would be to divide by a negative 10. So if I divide by a negative 10, that becomes 1 or just v. The zeros cancel. Negative 17 over negative 1 is positive 17. v equals 17. There's my equivalent equation. Why could I add 3 to both sides? Addition property of equality. Why could I divide by 10? Division property of equality. Okay? All right, now let's take a look at 7, 9, and 10, which are all the same process. Okay, so 7, if we need to, we can say what's happening to n here. First, we divide by 8, then we would add 5. Okay, so for solving, we're working backwards. So first, I'd start by subtracting 5 from both sides. 6 minus 5 is 1. 5 minus 5 is 0, so we're left with n over 8. Subtraction property of equality says I can do this. So we did that one. So we bump up to the next step, which would be the inverse would be timesing by 8. So I times both sides by 8. 1 times 8 is 8. n divided by 8 times 8. The 8's cancel. We're left with n can do it because of the division property, oh, not the division, multiplication. Multiplication property of equality. And there's our equivalent equation that tells us exactly what that variable is. Okay, number nine, same idea. Okay, what's happening to p here? Well, first we would divide by five, then we would add five. So we're going backwards, so we subtract five first. Not from the 5 down there, because that's being divided, but from that 5. That's 0, p over 5 on the right. The addition property of equality... Oh my goodness, I'm getting them all wrong lately. The subtraction property of equality tells me that I do it on both sides. 8 minus 5 would give me 3. So 3 still equals p over 5, or p divided by 5. That's an equivalent equation. But I want to get even more simple, so I'm going to go to the next step. 
which the opposite of dividing by 5 is timesing by 5. So I times both sides by 5. Those become 1. So I'm left with just p equals 5 times 3, which is 15. The multiplication property of equality tells me I can do that. And there's my equivalent equation. That's the easiest one to deal with. Okay? Um, by the way, at any time, if you needed some more time to write some of this down, um, please ask the guest teacher to either pause or go back a little bit. Um, please give yourself the time to get this stuff written down. Hopefully we're seeing the patterns here, because that's the point, is to see the patterns. All right, let's take a look at number 10 now. Okay. So, once again, if I'm not sure what's happening to x, take a look. First we divide by 6, right, order of operations, then subtract 5. And that will give us our answer. So solving, we go opposite. So I start by adding 5 to both sides because of the addition property of equality. That becomes 0. I'm left with x divided by 6 equals negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. We did that one. Now we want to simplify further because we've still got this x divided by 6. So I do the opposite of dividing by 6, which is timesing by 6. Timesing and dividing undo each other, so I'm left with x equals 6 times negative 3, negative 18. And I can do that because of the division property of equality. That was not your bell to leave. That was just a bell that happened to ring while I'm making this. Okay? So, there we go with that one. All right, so now we got the back side. Okay, so we've got 24, 13 to 24. So we've got two sets of six. Okay, um, so let's take a look. I'll do an example here. Number 13, we'll do an example of that one. And then we will um, go from there. Okay, and actually maybe I'll do two examples here because there's something else I want to show you here on these ones. Okay. And then you'll have time to work on those four, and then we'll go to the next group of six, okay? So, if we are looking here at this, um, we've got 2 times r minus 7 equals negative 30. Okay, now there's two ways we can deal with this. The first way would be to distribute. Remember, this just means multiplication. So, 2 times r, right, because when we distribute... We're saying we go 2 times r minus 2 times 7, so 2r minus 14. So we get 2r minus 14 equals negative 30. Now, we didn't touch this right side, we just simplified this. But we use that distributive property of equality to write this like this. Okay? Now we treat it the same way we did before. We would add 14 to both sides, giving us 2r equals negative 30 plus 14 would be negative 16. Using the addition property of equality, then we would divide both sides by 2 using the division property of equality to give ourselves r equals negative 8. And that would be our, most equi our simplest equation that is equivalent to each one of these other equations. They're all the same equation, um, but r equals negative 8 is the most simple. So that's one way we could do it. Okay. The other way we could deal with this one is realizing that we've got negative 4 times something in parentheses. Order of operations says we deal with parentheses first, then multiply, then add or subtract. Going backwards then, we could deal with, because of this is in parentheses, we can't deal with add and subtract yet. We can't deal with what's inside there yet. So we could first do the opposite of multiplication, then we could deal with what's inside the parentheses. So on these type, there's two ways to do this. Okay. So if I'm doing it this way, I would say, you know what? I'm going to divide, well, let's look at it again using this thing. What's happening to n? 
Well, it's inside parentheses, so first we would subtract a 9, because that's a negative 9. Then once we dealt with the parentheses, we times by negative 4. So if we're solving and going backwards, first we would divide by negative 4. Then we would add 9. Now, that's kind of backwards to what we've done, but that's because of the parentheses. So, first I take this whole thing, let's use a different color, and divide by negative 4. Now, because the whole thing is being multiplied, those negative 4's cancel out. I'm left with 9 plus n equals whatever 56 divided by 4 is, and I should know that, but I can't remember. So it would be a negative 14, okay? So, we can do that because of the division property of equality. Okay, so we did that one. Now we've got to add 9 to both sides. So we add 9 to both sides, giving us n equals negative 14 plus 9, which would be a negative 5. So we do that by the addition property of equality. And there we go. Okay, so either one works. You can do it both ways on these. I don't care which way you do it as long as you understand. Um, and the second way will work for 15, 16, 17, and 18. Um, the problem is sometimes when it gets more complex, that there's a little bit more to it than just that simple thing. Okay? So let's have our guest teacher pause our, our questions. We've got 15 through 18 that I want you to do. Let's give ourselves about 8 to 10 minutes again. So pause that video um, using these examples. Get up to number 18 in 10 more minutes. All right, so let's take a look at these four. I'm going to do them alternating, so I'll do each each one each way. Um, we'll start with 15, and we'll start with the division one first. So I've got what's happening to x. It's inside of parentheses, so we'd add 9 first, then times by 5. So doing the opposite, I would divide 5 first. That gives me x plus 9 equals negative 5 divided by 5 would be negative 1, not 0. Division property of equality tells me I can do that. Then we do the opposite of adding 9, which would be subtracting 9. We get x equals negative 10. Subtraction property of equality says I can do that one. Okay? And there's my answer, my most equivalent equation, which actually the whole thing is the answer because that's what we're striving to do. Okay, now 16. Let's say I wanted to distribute first. So I times negative 9. So negative 9 times negative 6, positive 54. Negative 9 times m be a negative 9m equals 108. Okay, we use the distributive property of equality to do that. Then, if I look at this, now see how that changes. Now we're timesing by the negative 9 first. Then we're adding... 54, because it's a positive 54. So I start off by subtracting 54 from both sides, giving me negative 9m, because that becomes 0, and we just get rid of zeros. 108 um, minus 54 is actually 54 again. And that was the subtraction property of equality that allowed me to do that. Then we divide by a negative 9 on both sides, using the division property of equality. And we end up with 1m, which is just m. 54 divided by negative 9 would take us back to negative 6. Okay. All right. Number 17. Oops. Don't want to scoot it up. Okay. So this one, um, we could divide by 7 on both sides first. Right. That would give me 4 plus b equals um, 84 divided by 7. Negative 84 divided by 7 gives us negative 12. We use the division property of equality. Then we'd add 4 to, or subtract 4 using the subtraction property of equality because it's a positive, making that 0, and we end up with b equals negative 16. Okay? And finally, number 18, if we distribute the 2 first, We'd have negative 42 equals 2 times a minus 2 times 3, which is 6, using the distributive property of equality. 
then we would add 6 to both sides, giving us a negative 36 equals 2a, using the addition property of equality. And then we divide by 2, giving us a equals negative 18, using the division property of equality. And there's those ones. Okay, now the last six. Now, if we don't quite finish um, before the bell rings, put these away in our drawer, and uh, then we'll be able to um, finish them tomorrow. Um, but we should be able to. The rate we're going, we should be able to. So I'm going to do two more examples here, okay? And we're going to see what we do with these ones. Now, thinking back to this, we had two times the whole thing. Well, now we've got dividing the whole piece. Instead of dividing just the variable, we're dividing the whole piece. So it kind of works in a similar manner. Okay. So what's happening to m? It's like m is in parentheses. First, according to order of operations, I would have to add, then I could divide by the 14. So going backwards, we do the opposite of the dividing first, then add or subtract. So m, first we'd add 8, then divide by 14. So we're solving, so we times both sides by 14. Those would cancel out, become 1, which just gets, we get rid of 1 when we're timesing. So I'd end up with m plus 8, 2 times 14 would give me 28. And that was using the multiplication property of equality. Okay, did that one. Opposite of adding 8 now is subtracting 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, giving me m, because 8 minus 8 is 0, equals 20, because 28 minus 8 is 20. And there's my equivalent equation that's the simplest. And using the subtraction property of equality, we could do that. Okay? So that's all we're doing here. So let's take a look now at number 20. Same idea. What's happening here to r? First, we'd subtract 10 because it's all together above the division sign. Then we would divide that by 3. So going backwards, we start by timesing both sides by 3. So we'd get negative 30 equals r minus 10, because those 3's cancel each other out using the multiplication property of equality. Then we would add 10 to both sides, because that's the inverse operation of subtraction, giving us negative 20 would equal r, using the addition property of equality. Okay, So you've got 10 minutes, uh, 5 to 10 minutes, um, to finish these last four. Shouldn't take you too long should be able to do them. I've only got two minutes left on my video because um, I have to stop at 30, so pause it now um, and then we'll take a look at our answers. Alright, so we should have done that. Let's take a look at how we did. So on 21, first A we would subtract 6, then divide by 2. We're going to times by 2, then add 6. So I times 2 both sides. Those cancel. Negative 6 plus A equals 4 times 2, which is 8, using the multiplication property of equality. Add 6 to both sides. That gives me 0 here, so a equals 8 plus 6, which is 14. There's my most equivalent equation, using that addition property of equality to finish it out. Okay, if I look at 22, we'd start by timesing by 3 to both sides. 3 times 2 is 6. Those 3's cancel. We get m plus 1. Subtract 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. 5 equals m. We use the subtraction property of equality and the multiplication property of equality again. Okay, If we look at 24, um, we would start off by, once again, timesing by the denominator since it's over everything, and that's the only reason it works. Giving us negative 3 plus x. 14 times negative 1 is negative 14, using the multiplication property of equality. Then we'd add 3 to both sides giving us negative 11 equals x using the addition property of equality. Okay, now if we really wanted to, we could split this up and have x over 3 minus 1 third. And we could add 1 third to both sides, then times by 3. But we really don't want to do it that way because it's not as nice. So we do it the way we've been doing them, which looks like this. So I times both sides by 3 giving me 12 equals x minus 1, multiplication property of equality. Then we're going to add 1 using the addition property of equality to get our answer. And we're done!